we see many kinds of angles all around us every day. Probably the most common is the right angle of 90 degrees, such as this one. The design of this floor tile is based on right angles. Another common angle is the 45 degree angle. Before defining an angle, let's consider some terms which will be of help to us. Such terms as point and line are important when we study angles. A point has no size, but we represent it by a dot. A line actually has no width or thickness, but we represent it this way. A line has only one dimension, length. We may define a line segment as a definite part of a line. From point A to point B is a line segment. Part of a line extending indefinitely in one direction from a point is called a ray. Two rays with a common end point. This is one definition of an angle. On any angle, the rays are called the sides. Their point of meeting is the vertex of the angle. The sides can be extended indefinitely from the vertex, but this will not change the size of an angle. The size of an angle depends only upon the amount of opening between its sides, as we will see by measuring angles. We are already familiar with linear units of measure, such as an inch, a foot, and a yard. To measure an angle, we use a protractor, a device marked off in units called degrees. The idea of the protractor is attributed to the Babylonians, who divided a circle into 360 equal parts. A half circle of 180 parts is the basis of the protractor. If rays are drawn from the zero point on the protractor through two consecutive marks on the circle, the angle formed can be used as a unit of measure. This is one degree, a unit of measure. The protractor is marked off in degrees in two directions so that angles lying in either direction can be measured. Let's measure an angle we saw before. The center of the protractor, marked by a small line segment, is placed on the vertex of the angle, with the zero degree mark lying on one ray of the angle. Angles lying in this position are measured by using the inner scale. The second ray, extending through the scale on the protractor, goes through the point marked 45 degrees. We can see that the size of an angle does not change by altering the lengths of the sides. Our angle still measures 45 degrees. Any angle that measures less than 90 degrees is called an acute angle, and it is sharp or pointed in appearance. If we increase our 45 degree angle another 45 degrees, we have an angle of 90 degrees, a right angle. The angle formed in the corner of this window pane is a right angle. When we increase our angle to more than 90 degrees, we have an obtuse angle. Any angle of more than 90 degrees but less than 180 is an obtuse angle. It is blunted in appearance. An angle of 180 degrees is called a straight angle. Its rays extend in opposite directions from the vertex, and it appears as a straight line. When the vertex of an angle is at the center of a circle, the angle is given a special name. This kind of angle is called a central angle. We measure central angles the same way as other angles. This central angle measures 100 degrees. This portion of the circle is the intercepted arc of the central angle. 
The intercepted arc always contains the same number of degrees as the central angle. So, since this central angle measured 100 angular degrees, its intercepted arc will contain 100 arc degrees. We have already learned that the size of an angle will not change by altering the length of the sides. The same is true of a central angle. This central angle measures 100 degrees, and if we lengthen the line segments, the central angle still measures 100 degrees. We also find the same number of degrees in each of the arcs. All angles are usually named in three common ways, by a capital letter at the vertex, sometimes written angle B or angle B, by a small letter within the angle, as angle Y, or by three capital letters, the middle letter being the vertex letter, and the other two being the names of points on the sides of the angle, as angle ABC. The letter indicating the vertex is always in the middle when we use three letters to name an angle. To draw an angle of any given size, say 54 degrees, we draw a line BA to be used as a side of the angle. The point B is selected on this line for the vertex of the angle. We place the protractor so that its center falls on point B and its zero degree mark on the inner scale lies on BA. We make a dot opposite the 54 degree division mark on the inner set of degree readings. Then we draw a line from this point C to point B, the vertex. Angle ABC measures 54 degrees. How can we measure an angle lying in this position? We could do this by turning the protractor to this position. However, we could do this more easily by turning the protractor this way. The zero mark of the protractor remains on the vertex of the angle. Now we use the outer set of degree readings. We see that angle ABC measures 54 degrees. Remember, the vertex letter is always the middle letter in naming an angle of three letters. Now that we've seen how to name and measure angles, we can compare two angles. We'll indicate the sides of the two angles this way. If the sides of angle ABC correspond exactly to the sides of angle RST, the angles contain the same number of degrees. Two angles are equal if their sides can be made to exactly correspond, or as we say, coincide. Two angles may be added by placing them side by side so that the vertex and a side of one coincide with the vertex and a side of the other, and the common side is between the angles. When angle A and angle B are added together, a new angle is formed, angle C. Angle A plus angle B equal angle C. Two angles may also be subtracted. We can do this by placing angle B on angle A so that the vertex and a side of angle B coincide with the vertex and a side of angle A, and the common side is not between the angles. If angle A measures 60 degrees and angle B measures 30 degrees, angle C, the new angle that's formed, measures 30 degrees. Angle A minus angle B equals angle C. How angles are added and subtracted are just two of the many procedures we have learned. We have also seen how angles are drawn, measured, named, and identified. Most of what you learn about angles 
will be useful to you when you work with triangles, one of the most important figures you will study in mathematics. Thank you.